This series has been a long time in the making. In the days since my Zion 2018 trip, I've had a very busy and bumpy road with lots of work and little time to edit or photograph. However, things are moving in the right direction, and this story is still well worth telling. My annual Zion fall color trip is one of the highlights of my year, and something I never tire of. It seems that each year I get more comfortable and familiar with this majestic place. Instead of feeling like a distant, remote destination, visiting Zion, for me, is like returning to a second home. On this trip, I slept as well in my tent as I do in my own bed at home. The washes became like familiar hallways, the canyons like favorite rooms. This place is truly special to me and well worth the time I've spent getting to know it. On this trip, I would spend 10 days learning the ins and outs of Zion National Park and the Colorado Plateau it so elegantly represents. For the first night of the trip, I stayed with my friend and fellow large format landscape photographer, Alan Brock, before getting a site of my own for the remainder of the trip. After working all morning and driving all day, I arrived in camp late at night on day one for some much needed rest. Waking up in the incredibly scenic Zion. Check this out. Our campsite for the first couple of nights was not one of the National Park campgrounds, but rather a corporately owned one in the town of Springdale. <laughs> it was the best we could get at the time, but the difference between the peaceful, spread out National Park Service campgrounds and the crowded corporate ones definitely shows. After breakfast, we headed out into the park to get an idea of what sort of promise this fall would hold. As it turns out, we had timed the fall colors perfectly, with more vivid color than any of us had ever seen in the park to date. It was going to be an amazing year. I would spend the remainder of the day exploring the washes and canyons, looking for compositions and marking photo opportunities on my GPS for later in the week. The vast majority of my time on these large format photography trips is spent scouting for compositions, and this trip would be no exception. Being alone in nature to experience the sights and sounds for hours on end is one of my favorite aspects of these trips, although I definitely enjoy the opportunities to catch up with friends and meet many fellow landscape photographers as well. Well, it's October 20th, and this is our first day, first full day in Zion National Park for the fall 2018 trip. Alan and I camped in a campground last night that was less than ideal, a bit uh, kind of crowded and uh, noisy, but we are fortunate to have a place to camp that's right in Springdale, and even though the campsites for the uh, main campgrounds were booked out. Uh, to, after tonight, we're going to be moving to one of the main campgrounds in the park, so that'll be a little bit better, I think. Um, the colors are just beginning to peak on the cottonwoods and the maples. And what that means is that over the next 10 days, we should get quite the fireworks show, which should be really great. Uh, so we're really looking forward to that. So should be a good trip, and I think we arrived just at the right time this year. So I'm back here in this wash and I just set up a composition on the scene you see behind me of these beautiful maples in peak fall color. There's a little bit of green left on them, but it's not too bad. And honestly, you could not ask for better conditions. I managed to get the scene perfectly still for one second on Velvia 100 at F32. 
and this is working with the Intrepid 8x10. So we're going to have an 8x10 exposure of this. Now, for this particular composition, <laughs> I maxed out what the camera could actually do. Let me show you here. So you see the camera here, and let's see. So basically what happened was um, I want to shoot this extremely wide and relatively uh, far from the camera, or close to the, far from the camera. <laughs> so I gotta focus on infinity and shoot a 180 millimeter lens on eight by 10. Now that's about a 24 millimeter equivalent on four by five. Now the problem with this particular lens is that this is actually a four by five lens. It's a Fujinon 180 millimeter 5.6 W. And uh, it, this is the W version that doesn't really have a lot of coverage. So it has just enough to cover this film area of eight by 10, but not much more. Now here's the thing I ran into in order to focus it the way I wanted. This uh, lip of the camera is actually in my shot. So I've got like this black shadow on uh, my ground glass. Now, I wanted that composition badly enough with that particular focal length on eight by 10 film that I decided to just go ahead and shoot it anyway. And what I did was I just baked that into my composition. So I gave myself some extra space on the bottom of the frame to crop that out when I scan it. And um, that way the composition is actually designed around having that in the frame. Now that's kind of a weird workaround, but when you have 409 megapixels to work with, you can afford to crop a little. And I honestly have zero problem doing that. Now, the ideal scenario would be to have a, uh, like a 150 or 180 millimeter lens that had much more coverage. Now, Ben was actually just down here like a few sec few minutes ago. I ran into him and he had the 150 uh, Nikkor, which, you know, that's a for example of a lens with tons of eight by 10 coverage that would have been a lot more ideal for this job. But um, this lens is a whole lot lighter, which is why I use it. I'm willing to put up with the uh, quirks um, of the limited coverage in order to gain some portability and not have to lug around a beast mode lens that's just gigantic. So I like how small it is and I like that it works super well on both eight by 10 and four by five. Anyway, this is just such a beautiful scene and I'm really glad to have an eight by 10 exposure in the bag for day one, technically day two of Zion 2018. just set up a new composition on this little outlet here. It's kind of a canyon that uh, where a stream comes out into this wash here and it pours out from underneath this uh, these maples here. And so I decided to kind of use that as the, uh, the centering point for the composition. So it's kind of a symmetrical balance composition. And then this little tree, I don't know if you can see it. There's a little tree somewhere over there yeah <laughs> there's a little tree back there in the middle and it's sort of um so you're looking under the branches of the yellow uh, tree and then you're seeing this green one sort of framed by them in the background with the uh little stream coming out so it's a very balanced composition i'm really happy with it um it was very challenging to pull off because i had to shoot it at f64 to get everything in focus and kind of uh, focus in the middle. Shot this on a 300 mil Fujinon 8.5 at f64 on Velvia 100 for four seconds. So I've been standing here a while waiting for these leaves to stop and they finally did stop for a second and I was able to get that exposure in. Uh, unfortunately, while the first, this is the second attempt on this exposure, the first attempt on the exposure didn't actually work so well. Um, this happened. 
So what happened here was I took out the dark slide and then I went to put it back in and the film hold film must have been loaded into the dark slide uh, slot and on on one side or something because it just wedged the film right out and popped it into the camera and uh, jammed. So that's unfortunate because then I lost a twenty dollar sheet of Velvia. So that's toast. Um, <laughs> what's really funny is I was just in here um, like an hour or two ago, and I ran into Ben back up here and he told me it's kind of a similar story where he was standing back there and lost I want to say four sheets of film just to various like things not working out exposure miscalculations I think he might have burned a sheet or something so it really stinks to burn sheets of Velvia when they're 20 or 30 bucks a sheet but um, unfortunately, just when you're working with physical film, that does happen sometime. But the reason we do it is just the absolutely nuts level of quality. It's 52 times the size of 35 millimeter full frame. Um, and you know, he scans, he could scan his to around 700 megapixels or so could I on a drum scanner. And then I scan mine at home about 400 megapixels. So we just like having that obscene level of detail, especially with these beautiful scenes of the fall colors. These tiny little leaves are gonna be You'll be able to just punch in, punch in, punch in, and just see the in, the immense detail on each individual leaf. And I think the Velvia plays so well with scenes like this, where uh, it just kind of amplifies the colors and contrast, and makes the reds and the yellows really pop, and the blues come out, and it just really works so well with scenes of fall color like this. So, looking forward to seeing how these two exposures turn out. Unfortunately, I only had two sheets of Velvia budgeted for today, and one of them failed. So I did expose an extra one. So definitely no more eight by 10 for me today. Um, <clears throat> ben just gave me a box of Ektar, so I might load up some of that for later this evening, we'll see. Um, but I do have plenty of four by five loaded. So we're gonna see about uh, loading up some four by five, maybe if I come up to any more compositions. So anyway, that's two images in the bag for today. Uh, day the first day of shooting in Zion which I think I'm pretty excited about if that was all I got done today and I just went back to town took it easy for the rest of the day I would be okay um, I've done a ton of scouting probably hiked a couple miles just scouting washes and stuff and doing testing compositions um, the way I test compositions is uh, let me show you here so this app I use is called viewfinder mark 2 and it is a very expensive app um, but the way it works is let's see here so the way it works is it simulates all of my lenses and films and cameras and everything in one app so check this out I'll show you real close So what that does is it simulates my uh, 300 mil Fujinon on 8x10, which works out really well because then I can walk around with just the camera and not actually, or just the phone rather, and not have to get this huge 8x10 camera out every time I want to test to see if a composition works. So that's what we all tend to use is these apps. Um, it's very accurate and it's super helpful. The app is about $32 but we love it because it just allows us to walk around these washes and scout and mark compositions so I save them on the GPS I save a comp shot on my iPhone which is actually labeled with all of the focal length options and everything and the exact composition then I grab the camera I come back and I actually shoot the scene because it would just be super cumbersome to walk around with my camera bag all the time because my camera bag right now has 8 by 10 of a camera, 4x5 camera, three large format lenses, which is including four lens boards because one of them is a Sinar adapter. Um, I have two 8x10 film holders with me and six 4x5 film holders with me and a 4K professional video camera set up with a mic and two tripods, one for the big camera and one for the video camera. So that is pretty insane. Um, you definitely want to not carry that everywhere if you can avoid it. So there's a tip. Viewfinder Mark II on the App Store. It's about $32, which is nuts. But the use we get out of it makes it worth every penny. So I'm going to get back to shooting and do some more scouting and see if we find anything else today.
Well, I was just about to pack up and leave this scene, and I went to film a quick Instagram story video of the scene, and I noticed that what I saw through the iPhone I actually liked better than what I was seeing through the lens on the camera. Now, I had already effectively burned three sheets of 8x10 um, today, so I would be using two full days worth of 8x10. Um, but I decided to do it anyway because I'm not going to be shooting 8x10 tomorrow anyways, so might as well, right? Um, I was really happy with the composition. I think that the wider shot that the iPhone was seeing, uh, which roughly approximates the uh, 180mm on 8x10, uh, was just a stronger composition. Now, I, c I could get home and decide that I like the other one better in the end. I don't know. But basically, um, these rocks, um, I had cropped them out and just included, like, this this foreground here. But I actually found that what I liked was including about half rocks, half foliage, and just this band of darkness through the middle and it sort of balances each other out and it forms a more balanced composition with a, a stronger foreground and background uh, pairing. So that's what I ended up doing. Um, I actually feel significantly stronger, better about the second composition than I do about the first one. So that's why I decided to shoot two different compositions on the same scene. Um, the wind keeps picking up, but a second ago it was actually still for two seconds. So that was good. Um, I'm going to pack up now because I uh, have run out of 8x10 film and I really don't want to expose any more 4x5 today, although I could change my mind, we'll see. But anyway, that is three exposures in the bag today on 8x10 uh, and one burned sheet because of a film holder glitch, so that's always fun. I'm going to keep going and I think... I'm pretty satisfied with three 8x10 Velvia exposures in one day on the first day of the trip. So that is awesome. As with most days on photography trips, I spent the rest of this one exploring the park and getting to know the place. In addition to landscape photography, I really enjoy hiking, backpacking, and camping, as well as a wide variety of other outdoor pursuits. In today's heavily urbanized and abstracted world, more and more people are plagued with issues like attention deficit disorders, anxiety, depression, and even suicide. Furthermore, we see more and more issues with obesity, diet, exercise, cancer, and other often lifestyle-related health issues. We've become a, com a people completely alienated from our own home, the Earth. We're completely adapted for life here. It's our home yet we are complete strangers with it. We take advantage of it, exploit it, pollute it, destroy it, and kill its innocent inhabitants, the animals, without a second thought. Then we suffer from countless health problems and deaths as a result of the toxic relationship we've created with our own home. Spending time in nature gives me time to reflect on a better way to live on this earth, a lighter, gentler, more ethical and holistic approach that's better for my own health, that's better for my own health, and better for the planet we all share. This whole landscape photography thing isn't just about photography. It's about the lessons our time in the outdoors can teach us about ourselves, each other, and our planet, and how these lessons learned can affect our daily lives when we return home. So the next time you're out in nature, take a few minutes just to contemplate and be mindful of how much of a miracle it is that life exists at all, and how special and unique this wild, wonderful planet truly is. Then consider how you can improve the way you live on it and with your fellow inhabitants of the earth. Alan Brock and I met up several times throughout the day and photographed different scenes. We were both absolutely floored by just how vivid the fall colors were this year. Neither of us had ever seen them as bright or as widespread as they were this year. They seemed absolutely electric. Later in the afternoon, I met up with Alan again in a wash and we photographed the reflection in one of the pools there. He generously filmed some third person footage of my process of setting up the camera, metering the scene, and creating an exposure. The physical hands-on tactility of working with a large format film camera is a big part of why I use them. It creates a nice break from our increasingly all digital world, especially when you use computers all day, every day for a living as I do.
So I just came down this wash and I just saw Alan set up on this scene right here. And of course it's too good not to shoot. I didn't feel as bad about comp stomping him because he was here to watch. <laughs> but anyway, I shot it on 90 millimeter. He shot his on 180. So they're going to be two totally different focal lengths and compositions. His is a lot tighter and mine goes all the way up to those trees in the background. But the basic idea here is uh, to capture the reflection. So you're actually focusing on the reflection. But part of the reason I shot with a wide angle lens too is I wanted that deep depth of field that I could get with a 90 of capturing the bank in focus with the mud ripples and the reflected light and the tree and the mountain and the blue sky behind it in focus as well so and there's some uh, fall color up there in the background too so we'll see if this works out it was shot on Ektar 100 in order to um, maximize the dynamic range because that sky is pretty darn bright so we will see how it turns out I only burned one sheet on this and Alan burned like four so if mine doesn't turn out then oh well I, I don't think I should spend too much more film on this but I think I got it so we'll see The maples this year are stunning. I would have to say, I mean, this is the best I've ever seen Zion in terms of fall color. The, the maples are not just bright, they're not just saturated, they're electric. They're like bright, v neon, crank up the saturation to 11 saturated. They're screaming loud. And that's how they look to the naked eye. I mean, it's just, you walk by and you're like, it's surreal, you can hardly believe it's here. This uh, particular stand, Behind me, Alan and I are just trying to figure out, like, can this actually be shot? Because there's not really a composition on this particular stand that we found so far. But we just wanted to take it in, share it with you guys, film some footage just to show how incredible the maples are this year. So I just finished exposing a couple sheets of Velvia, two different compositions on this wash behind me, kind of looking down with these flowing leading lines coming in there we go. <laughs> from the sandstone uh, face that I'm standing on. And they flow down into the, into the wash, which forms sort of an S-curve going through the scene. And then we've got these incredibly saturated uh, maples and other... Tr <laughs> maples and oaks <laughs> on the adjacent wall which just looks really amazing and uh, pairs so beautifully so now you've got this sort of sandwich composition with a lot of visual energy to it anyway um credit for this composition doesn't actually go to me it goes to alan over here so he had scouted it earlier, it kind of showed me a sneak preview of what he was planning for this evening and I had nothing else to do. I was actually planning on wrapping up and going back down into Springdale for the night. So I was like, hey, what the heck, let's burn some film. So we don't know what tomorrow's gonna be. Like people keep saying it might rain, there might be 50% chance of, of showers or storms or wind or something tomorrow. So we're kind of being a little bit liberal with our film use today because we may not get tomorrow. So we're just gonna see how much we can get in uh, packed into today in terms of uh, photographic productivity. But it's been an incredible busy, busy day. Burned three sheets of eight by 10 Velvia, two sheets of four by five Velvia, and one sheet of Ektar in four by five. So not bad.
Well, with those two sheets of Velvia in the bag, I think that's going to conclude day one or the first full day of shooting for Zion 2018. Um, I'm pretty happy with how today turned out. I've had a lot of success in finding compositions and also um, the conditions were just perfect. Best colors I've ever seen here in the park. Um, tomorrow the weather is uncertain at best so we were just trying to really pack in today and I think it went well. So we would actually not mind it too much if tomorrow we just had to take a break day. But uh, if you know, if things work out, we might be able to do some more exposures tomorrow. We'll see. But either way, today was a great, successful day of shooting large format film in Zion National Park. I'm Justin Lowry. Until tomorrow, stay curious. <laughs>